Hey guys, so I just want to do a brief overview of this video. This is not a how-to. This is just a how I did. Um, we're running 8.3 wire, and it's going to be hooked up to a 50-amp breaker to run 240 volts to my garage, and that's to be used for my welder and my plasma cutter. Enjoy the video. Hey guys, so a couple days ago, I went and I picked up a new breaker. Um, the wall outlet box, the wall plug for my welder. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to get wire. So I just got the wire and we'll talk a little bit about that. Um, we're going with the 8.3 and 50 amp breaker for this welder. This has got three wires in it plus ground. So what I'm gonna do is, um, I measured this all off with a a laser uh, measuring device from Bosch. Um, so I measured all my corners, measured the drop down in my box to where the breaker is going to be, and then I measured up to where uh, I'm going to put my outlet. I, I, I should have like three extra feet to play with in my measurements. I have a lot more wire than that to play with. Um, so I'm just going to go ahead and start securing the wire up to about two and a half feet before the box starts. I've already checked to see where my wire needs to be um, in the box, but I don't have it in there right now because I'm not going to shut the power off in my breaker box until I'm ready to put the wire through the top of the breaker box and then wire in my new breaker. This is uh, going to be fairly simple. So let's get started on. found my stud right here so I know where I'm gonna run my wire up from my subfloor in the house is about a foot taller than the floor in the garage so I was able to drill up um, in between the, the floor joists to get into this wall so now I've taken a level marked a straight line, put my box on here, marked it off. I'm gonna take my oscillating tool, cut the square, and then I'm using one of these uh, new construction type boxes, but <clears throat> it's got the flaps so you can add it after the fact um, since my drywall and everything's already done in my garage. Uh, so these flaps, will fold in when I put it in the wall. We'll slide it in. And then when we tighten the screw down, it'll flip up this flap and draw it close. So it'll sandwich the drywall between this ear and this ear. And um, I'm gonna be gentle with it when I use um, my welder. I may go ahead, I may go ahead and throw some screws in to that stud. The way I mark this, um, for this outlet to go in, it's, it should be right next to a stud. So I, I can secure it um, if needed. But I'm going to go ahead and cut this out. I forgot to, I got into my project 
and I wasn't thinking about bringing the camera upstairs. I just came up here, found the stud with my stud finder, marked it, uh, did measurements from the floor to get my height at 51 and a half inches, and then I took a level and got my straight lines. So I'll go ahead and finish cutting this out, and then I can take my fish tape, put it down through here, get it through the hole in the subfloor, um, tape my 8-3 onto here, and pull it back up. So let's get this thing cut out. You got it? Okay. You tape this on and I'll have you pull it through. I'm gonna tape a wire on the end of it <clears throat> and then have you pull it through slowly. All right, go ahead and start pulling it back towards you. Now. You can go faster than that. Get it through the hole. You got the white wire through the hole? Keep going. All right, I'll be right there. So I went down and taped my 8-3 onto the end of this cable since I already had it through. Is that it? Okay, thank you. Yes, dear. Thank you. So I went downstairs. I had to feed my fish tape up from the bottom through my small hole. I was able to get it on here the first shot. Pulled this through, taped on an old coaxial cable because I can't get to my other fish tape right now because I have so much crap in my garage from my um, old shop. So, old piece of uh, coaxial taped it on the end of the fish tape, pulled it back through, taped my wire onto my coaxial, fed it back up. Now I've got my wire through my wall. <clears throat> I did get real close to the stud too. So I mean, it's right there. So if I want to screw this to that two by four later, I can. And it's a perfect fit. 
So as long as this doesn't rip through the drywall, because I get too rough with it, it should be fine. So I'm going to go downstairs, just button up the rest of this line and secure it. And then I'll come back up, wire the plug, and then um, from there we'll finish out in the breaker box. Here's what we got. 50 amp flush mount power outlet. So it's gonna go like this here. This will be our neutral, and these two will be our hots. So that's what we're dealing with. I do need to go get a cover plate because they were out of the double box plates when I went to and got all this stuff. So I'll have to go back to a hardware store and grab a plate before uh, it'll be finished. But now that I've got all the wire ran and this part done in the garage, um, I can drop it down in the top of the breaker box, wire in the breaker, pop the breaker in, and just leave the breaker off. All right, got our breaker installed, our new lines ran into the box, got our two hots going in the breaker, our neutral going in the neutral bar, and uh, so now we'll flip on this breaker, go outside, make sure we got the correct voltage, then we'll come back down and put the cover on and be ready for our new plasma cutter tomorrow. 122 from one side, 121 from the other. There we go, 245 from both hots. So now I just need to 
turn the breaker back off until I get the cover plate tomorrow and put the cover plate on.